Hello, this is Steve from SDR Play. In this short video, we're going to look at some of the common installation and upgrade questions we have concerning SDR Uno. Looking through the support ticket system at SDR Play, we found a number of questions came up pretty frequently, both regarding to uninstalling the software before downloading the newest version, or having problems after downloading the new version, or something's not working right, should I uninstall the old software? Can I keep multiple versions of SDR Uno installed? What if I want to go back to the previous version? And what if I get a message, an error message, about the API, or an error message saying no RSPs found? Also, I looked in Device Manager and there was an unknown device. What should I do? And in general, what are the basic troubleshooting steps for SDR Uno? So many questions but we figured the best way to answer this would be to look at each of the issues in turn and you can see how it applies to any questions you may have. First up, let's dispel a myth. Uninstalling the software is very unlikely to help resolve any issues you may have. If you're upgrading the software, an install in place is more than likely adequate. With that in mind, it should be the last resort, not the first. Now, it's quite possible that in some instances it may help to reinstall the SDR UNO program or the API which may be downloaded separately and that may help in some cases. Later in this video I'll show you the way to solve the commonly seen issues but if for some reason you want to remove SDR UNO entirely from your system I will first show you how you can accomplish that. Navigate to the Windows Start icon in the lower left corner of your screen, click on it and from the list that comes up scroll down until you get to the SDR Play section. If you open that up you can then scroll down again until you get to the settings for SDR Play, right click and you will then get an option to uninstall. That will open up a window where you can remove SDR Uno, the program, the API, and the plugins folder as you wish. The second method, again, beginning with the start icon, click on the Windows setting cog, go to the settings menu, and then select apps. When this list comes up, again, you can scroll down and until you find SDR Play Uno, SDR Play API, and the SDR Uno plugins. And you can uninstall them again as you see fit. Once again, I'd like to stress that removing the software is very unlikely to help resolve any issues. It's a common misconception that by doing so you'll remove any settings, whereas in fact your settings will remain intact even if you do remove the software first. If you want to update to the latest version of SDR Uno, the preferred method is to install in place, in other words, on top of your existing installation. You may see a message pop up advising you that a newer version is available, or if you've not enabled the auto update check, you can use the check for updates now option from the options menu in the main window to see if a new version is available. If you select yes that you want to do the update, you will be taken to the SDR Play website and you can follow the directions there. When you start SDR Uno, it may tell you an update is available or you can check by clicking on the options menu. Regardless, when you see the message that an update is available, you can click on yes and what it will do is close down SDR Uno and take you over to the SDR Play website where the latest version of the software can be downloaded. Once you get to the SDR Uno download page, simply scroll down on that page and then at the bottom you will see a button that you can click and that will download the latest version of the software for you. Just follow the directions and you'll be up and running again in no time. What happens if you've downloaded the latest software but then for some reason decide you want to revert to the previous version? The most common scenario for this is with regard to third-party programs that don't necessarily conform to the latest API versions from SDR Play. To do that, the best way is quite simply to run the installer again. Just navigate to your download directory, find the file in question, 
and just double click and run the installer. That will ensure that the, the version of SDR Uno you require and the corresponding API for it are installed again and you'll be back where you were. Another question we're asked is, is it possible to maintain multiple different versions of SDR Uno on your PC? I think the answer to that is a qualified yes. It is possible to keep multiple versions there, perhaps in separate directories for each version, but you have to be a little bit careful because not all versions of the API can coexist. Therefore, our recommendation is keep the installers in your downloads folder, and if for some reason you want to run a different version of SDR Uno, run that installer to make that the current version on your system, and then if necessary, run the installer for the newer version again later. Sometimes you may see a message about a problem either with the API or with the service. And when you do that, there are a number of ways to try and fix it. The easiest way is just to try and restart the API service from the options menu in the SDR Uno main window. But perhaps you can't even start the program, in which case the alternative would be again to go to the Windows Start menu. If that alone doesn't help, another option is to try rebooting your PC disconnect any RSPs, reboot, reconnect the RSP, and then check in Task Manager to see if the service is running. And then at that point, restart SDR Uno again. So going to the SDR Uno main window and clicking on the Options button, you can go down and start, try to restart the API service. That may solve the problem for you. However, if you can't even get SDR Uno running, the alternative approach involves going to the Windows Start button on the lower left of your screen. Click on the Start icon and then when the Start menu appears scroll down again to the SDR Play section and then when you drop down from that you will again see an option to restart the API service. In some instances, STR Uno has behaved erratically due to a corrupted .ini file. And the one way to fix this is by doing a reset. At the moment, if you do a reset, you will lose any saved workspaces, but future versions of STR Uno will preserve those workspaces for you. But for now, it's a good idea to back up that .ini file before performing a reset. That way you can restore those settings if the reset did not work. So now, let's look at how you can back up the INI file and then go on and perform a reset using one of two different available methods. The first method again involves using the Windows Start menu. Click on it and then scroll down to SDR Play. Open up SDR Play and look for the section that says Open Data Directory. Here on the screen we now see our INI file along with some log information. We can simply right click on that, select copy, and then again we can right click and select paste, and this will give us a copy of our INI file. So if necessary we can rename that file later and replace the SDR Uno INI file that's already there. The second method you can start when SDR Uno is running. In the SDR Uno main window, click on the Options button and again scroll down until you see the option to open the data directory in Explorer. Now once you've opened this file, what you should do is close SDR Uno. This will allow for all the parameters to be updated in the INI file before we try and make a backup. So once SDR Uno has been closed, we can go in and we can do a copy and paste as described before. Now let's perform the reset. If SDR Uno is running, go to the Options button and scroll down to Reset Default Settings. When you do that, you'll be asked if you're sure, check on Yes, SDR Uno will close and the file will be reset. The second method, again, uses our old friend, the Windows Start menu. Click on that, again, scroll down to SDR Play, and within the SDR Play drop-down, you will find a reset 
.ini file, click on that and once again the file will be reset. Another often mentioned problem is a message saying no RSPs found. There are basically three things we can try here. Device manager is a good starting point, but you might also want to try a different cable or perhaps a different USB port on your PC. If you're using the RSP with an external hub, you might want to try connecting it directly to your PC to see if that makes any difference. But if you are using an external hub, be sure that it's mains powered or AC powered as non-powered external hubs often cannot provide enough current to run the RSP correctly. Sometimes when you look in Device Manager you see an unknown device showing up rather than the RSP in which case the way to take care of that would be to completely uninstall the driver, disconnect the RSP and then when you reconnect it the correct driver may be loaded or it may be necessary to reboot the PC. Let's have a look at this in practice. Once again we go to the Windows Start menu but we right click this time instead of the left click and when the window pops up we can select Device Manager. Scrolling down to Sound, Video and Game Controllers and opening up that section we should see our RSP. If we do not see it or if it shows with a warning triangle or a question mark or perhaps somewhere else within the uh, device manager we see an unknown device then what we need to do is select the thing in question and then uninstall device. Now Windows 10 has a nice feature you have the option to show all devices even ones that are no longer connected so if you've been trying multiple different ports you may find that the RSP appears in different places so everywhere you see an unknown device or something incorrect right click on it then select uninstall device. In the case of multiple entries you want to remove all of them and then on the last one you also check the box saying delete the driver software for this device. Having done this unplug any RSPs you have connected and then reboot your computer. Hopefully after the reboot the devices will be detected correctly however there are still other issues that can occur Windows can be very difficult when it comes to drivers. Some of the other issues we're familiar with include driver signing issues with Win 7 which can be fixed with a downloadable security patch from Microsoft, some problems in Win 10 with core isolation which may require uh, some other modifications, and in general the use of extensible USB host controllers for USB 3.0 and 3.1 systems which are not fully backwards compatible with the USB 2.0 isochronous operation that's required by the RSP. But this particular problem can usually be resolved by using an externally powered, i.e. mains powered or AC powered hub. So if you have difficulty with any of those types of issues, then please visit us at sdrplay.com help and we will give you further advice. Now we've covered all the common issues and how to resolve them. So your basic troubleshooting guide would be, depending on what error message you see, follow the steps that we've previously covered showing how to overcome them. Verify that your RSP shows correctly in Device Manager. If necessary, restart SDR Uno. If that doesn't work, reboot the PC. If you still have problems after that, then please visit us at sdrplay.com for further suggestions and perhaps to open up a help ticket. As always, thank you for watching and we hope this information has been helpful. Again, if you need more information, please visit our website at sdrplay.com.